the brain again. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, oh. Man, I'm so young, I'm so young. Standing on my ten toes, I stay strong, and so I still move on, no matter what goes on. Starting from a far place, moving on, because I started from a far place. I'm all about the money making, no. I don't got time for any hate, no. I'm trying to go see different things, no. Because I started from a far place. I'm all about the money making, no. I don't got time for any hate, no. I'm trying to go see different things, I be feeling out of place, out of place. I hear the brown and then I feel like I'm in space. Tired screeching in the race. Same pace. Go slow till we popping out of base. Shorty wanna see my face. What up, We Fobs Nation? Welcome to We Fobs the Podcast. And you're keeping it posted right here with Guy So Smooth. I'm holding it down solo for now <laughs> till the rest of the crew comes in. But you know what? We do what we got to do, right? So, before we get things going, let's get some uh, housekeeping out of the way. Disclaimer. Everything expressed here on this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. The views expressed are the opinions or belong to the speakers themselves and do not represent the We Found Enterprise brand. It includes what I say, too. <laughs> The uh, WeFob's mission is to promote and encourage the changing of negative mindsets, stigmas, situations, and encounters into positive outcomes. We always, uh, we always want to share that with everybody here at WeFob's Nation. Make sure they have their mindset on the true value and goals and where we're wanting to go with what we do here on this platform. So. What's going on, guys? So smooth. Why are you hosting this podcast alone? Well, for obvious reasons, our entire WeFobs crew has gotten quite busy over the past year in real life. And, you know, they can make it on the podcast at least once a month for now when we all get together. We're all in different time zones across the world when we pull these podcasts off. So... You guys are getting, uh, you know, something pretty special. But I digress. Let me bring it back to what I'm doing here and why I'm hosting these solo podcasts for a couple until the crew gets back. I wanted to, there's a lot of news we wanted to share out there. And remember, we thought was on the road to doing financial freedom. We're still on that road. But I wanted to ask, from the Lee Bob Nation, how is your journey going so far? With that, there's a couple of things I wanted to share with you from what's been going on all over the world, especially here in the United States. And it, I, I, I think it's something we can look at and it's something we can, what would you call, ponder about. And I hope I can keep you ed- entertained and educated while I'm at it. But it's something new, something uh, fresh, something we pops. Uh, I better stop cutting it up, or should I say, beating around the bush and get right to it. So let's do it. Let's see what we got here. First topic of the day, or should I say, first topic of the moment, the podcast. Uh, it comes from, I love going to Yahoo Finance to figure out stuff. This one is from the Washington Post, Rachel Siegel. Siegel. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel, if I'm butchering your name. I always have to apologize. I released November 13th. That was yesterday, but I still think it's valid. It's real up-to-date news. Anyhow, what are we looking at here? Baby boomers are buying up all the houses. Okay. This is a little something something that they got going here. I've actually already read the article, so I'm going to give you the Wee Fobs version. And uh, this is just to show you what the article is right here. So I'm just going to go back for points. And that's about it. <laughs> so that article basically talks about how baby boomers who are our parents, uh, those of us who were born in the 80s, 
then the late 70s. Our parents are like all the baby boomer generation. And then after us is like generation what? X? I kind of, I, sometimes I get it wrong, but anyhow, going back to the, going back to the topic of the, you know, the article once again. Baby boomers are buying up all the houses. What is this talking about? And why is it significant for us here at We Fox? Well, it's significant because there's a lot of us can't afford to buy houses nowadays, especially the youngest, especially the millennials and those on down. They're having a hard time trying to buy up all the houses. But those who can afford, now, mind you, this is coming from this article. I am what would you call paraphrasing summarizing and giving you the wee fobs version so what it's saying is these baby boomers have come about and they're able to buy houses out of the current housing market now if you know about the housing market i'm gonna break it down for a coconut to simplify the housing market is the cost of houses right now in the world today Everybody knows the cost of houses right now in the world today is hell, hell expensive. So what that article is saying from Washington Post, I believe, I want to make sure I get my sources right. This article from the Washington Post by Rachel Susan, what it's saying is that the baby boomers are able to buy these houses because Either they sold their old houses and they have uh, extra cash lying around and they could afford these other houses. They also probably are looked at as more people who are more trustworthy to afford a loan for a house. The mortgage on a house, I guess, is what they call it. Um, they just have access to more options rather than an up-and-coming millennial or young and try to buy a house. The article does point out that it is very, very hard for these, the young ones, to buy houses nowadays. When I say, when I refer to the young ones, I'm referring to the early 20s on, between the 20s to the 30s category, if you're like 20 years old or even in your 18, all the way to 30, in your 30s, you're probably, if you're the average Joe or the average Jay, you are Probably not. You do. You don't own a house, and you're having a hard time trying to even afford one. But what the article says is the older generation is able to afford houses because they already had a home previously that they might have sold. They had uh, options. Um, they were set earlier, or they were set more earlier than the uh, than the younger guys. If I look at it. It's a it's a hard truth to come across because home buying a home is the dream of a lot of Americans, especially us indigenous and you know coconut heads. Owning a home is the dream, and usually it doesn't come easy. Um, I've got a couple of friends that are new homeowners, but they you know they work with their spouses hella hard, got into it, put their money, pulled their money together to buy a home. Where am I going with this? On your road to financial freedom, you definitely want to set down roots, a base of some sort where you can always come back to because peace of mind is priceless. And what do I mean by that? When you come to a place where you can sit and relax, it's your own kingdom, it's your own comfy place away from the hustle and bustle of the world. That re-energizes you to take on the remaining days going forward. Now, mind you, I myself am looking to, you know, in the future one day, own a home of my own for my kids and my family, my little family. Currently don't own one as of yet. That's the truth of that. But these articles like these kind of provide insight into where the times are headed and what, what's going on and where we are at this point in time in the world. So if it's hard for the younger guys to get a home and the older guys beyond us already has access to homes, how long do we have to wait till the house, the prices of houses come down to where we're able to afford it? 
Now, mind you, they're saying in that article the average prices of homes right now is like four hundred thousand and up. Man, ain't nobody can afford a four hundred thousand dollar home just yet. Uh, one of the other things this article points out um, is that people these baby boomers are paying for the homes cash. They've got very good credit, or they've got very good credit to get like a good mortgage on it, a good loan. Um, yeah, they're doing it that way. And a lot of the millennials and the youngest don't have that type of background, that type of financial history. You know, I learned, I've been told about it very early in my life, but I didn't listen to what people were saying about get your financial um, knowledge up until until just most recently, the most recent years. And I can't stress enough, we Fobs Nation, we need to work on our financial knowledge. We need the correct type of knowledge. We need to go to places to earn effective knowledge that can help us with our journey towards financial freedom. I'm not trying to be, I don't want to be too preachy, but that's, you're always going to hear me and the rest of the Weebos crew come back to that here on the Weebos podcast. That's because that's what this journey is all about. That's why we put out this podcast. We're trying to aim a lot of what we bring in the content here towards financial freedom. We want financial freedom for ourselves and we want to share the journey with you. And whether you use it or not, that's on you. We're not saying it's the one way to go. It was, you know, it's like the saying goes, there's many roads to Rome. And the paths to financial freedom for us, this is what we share. Just to give you all uh, some insight on it. So that's that article. I want to thank uh, Washington Post for that. From Yahoo Finance. Very good. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So this next one is another interesting article out of Yahoo Finance. And it's coming from CNN, Nathaniel Mayers, Myers, or Mayers. We want. Yeah. Sorry for butchering your name, Nathaniel. And now, the title is, the top headquarters of the article is Walmart, Costco, and other companies rethink self-checkout. <laughs> if any of you know anything and have been to these stores, Walmart, Costco, a lot of these other stores in the United States, especially, especially specifically the U.S., they do, they've had this thing, which I call it was new, but it's been around. Um, self-checkout, where you go and friggin' check out, um, what do you call it? You check out your items that you bought yourself. You go and pay, you know, you grab the scanner, and you beep, run the thing, and you check it out yourself. Self-checkout. And people have been complaining about it a lot, and they're, they're saying, you know, the other stupid, you know, the other dumb thing that came up with these self-checkouts is now they're asking for tips while you're doing self-checkout. And the traditionalists, traditionalists, like the people who've been to stores for a while, are saying, why are we paying tips on something that we're doing ourselves? And a lot of people would rather have, as evident by this article from CNN and Nathaniel, a lot of people would rather have someone else do their checkout, like a cashier do their checkout, and a you know a bag boy bag your items up so you can take to the car and take it back home. That's what it's looking like, and it's it's not looking too good for the self checkout. So what does that mean? How does that tie in with we fobs and <laughs> financial freedom moving forward? I think for this one, it's mostly about an opening in the job market. This is just me. Cashiers are going to become relevant again if this is the case. And this is what this article is saying, which it is kind of in a paraphrased way. We lost way. <laughs> which opens up the job market 
where you can earn some basic skills. Because, you know, everybody nowadays, you see these jobs asking you for so-and-so degrees, freaking doctorates and all that stuff. But they're giving you these ridiculous low ball pay. And that's what a lot of you see a lot of people fighting for in the world today is fair wages, like fair pay. Give me fair pay so that I could live in this age, which is not really happening. But I'm going off on a tangent here. Bring it back to the self-checkouts not looking too good for Costco, uh, Walmart. These are big stores. I mean, if they if they're looking to take out their self checkouts again, another job market is going to open up again, which is the cashier job market once again. And bag boys and bag girls, what are those bag boys? Those are the guys that, and girls that go and grab your items, put them in a bag. It's going to go back to the traditional way of shopping again, and that's pretty cool to me because you know I grew up during that time. I don't know about other people, I don't know. I don't know. I want to know how you, Lefaz Nation, if you're a millennial or anyone younger, do you? How do you feel about that when they take away the self checkouts? Um, is it something you look forward to? Is it something something weird? Do you have a certain strong feeling about it? I know I have a strong feeling about the part where you're, you know, they're asking for tips at the self checkout. Uh, Queen Moore, Queen, and the rest of the Why Use podcast crew did cover something about how tips are getting out of hand now in the United States. And I don't blame them. It's really getting out of hand. That's just my um, my personal opinion over it. But I would rather tip a bad boy and a bad girl who's doing, you know, put my items in the in the bag for me so I can take home to my or take to my car and take it home. I would rather do that. I, I, you know, pay for a service where a human person is working. Because the other argument nowadays is freaking AI taking over human jobs, which is why there's those strikes going on all over uh, the United States. The strikes, I guess they settled the strike with Hollywood, the actors and um, the producers and stuff like that. But, you know, they were all pissed with artificial intelligence trying to, the producers trying to use artificial intelligence to write scripts and uh, make movies without their um, without them getting a fair payment for their services. I can't believe I went off on that and all tied back to freaking self-checkout. Self-checkout has been a hot topic, but hot button topic lately. And people just they're feeling a certain way about it. And I think the CEOs of these companies are starting to feel the same way because they're experiencing the same things when they go and they have to do self-checkout. So they're coming back and they're like, oh, yo, 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 wait up here. We got to reassess this uh, self-checkout business. Because in Walmart, they also know one of the downfalls of self-checkout. Some people will check their ish out and some of them will not check these other items out and they just walk out the door. For lack of a better word, just walk away with it. Stealing. <laughs> and nobody's there to stop them. And then you got, you know, if you're in a place like California, which has the, the whole conflict over um, what it means, what type of criminal activity is considered misdemeanor and um, felony, and that's why they have all those robberies going on. Then you you know what's up. So it's one of those. If you know, you know. Pretty good articles from uh, yeah, Finance. Uh, the one about housing, where the old folkies are buying up the houses. And this one about self-checkout. <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, what do you think, we Bob's Nation, about the self-checkout business? Once again, I ask, do you want self-checkout to stay or do you want to cancel it completely? Drop a comment. Like, subscribe, share. You know what to do. We're on all social media channels. It's about that time, we head on over to the next segment of our We Files podcast. See you soon. Welcome to Biz News, the segment where we cover anything and everything natural, unnatural, supernatural, and all the above. 
Biz News is for the times when the information makes your brains go biz. This is Biz News. <laughs> we are back, We Fox Nation, for the biz news segment of our We Files podcast. Well, for this biz news topic, this I find is an interesting. Let's get to it. Now, this one kind of is along a social issues line. But then again, it's more along the line where people don't think about it. It's one of those moments. Like, <laughs> and it happens all the time in life. Literally. Okay, so we're going to go to BuzzFeed. Uh, BuzzFeed, who wrote this, doesn't tell me. Uh, I guess, yeah. But anyhow, this is what BuzzFeed tells us. Men in heterosexual marriages will never understand over one million people watch this woman's video breaking down how much work it takes to change your name after getting married. Okay, I read that wrong. Quick thoughts, fall out moment right there. There's uh, quotation marks here, so I got to read it with the quotation marks. Men in heterosexual men, wait up. <laughs> men in heterosexual marriages will never understand. And then the article states. Over 1 million people watched this woman's video breaking down how much work it takes to change your name after getting married. Ooh, definitely a news moment right there. So there's her video right there. I wonder, I wonder if I can get the sound to it. Yes, I can get the sound to it. I just didn't put it on. And then we let's watch this. So, and now I'm on to the point where I'm changing my driver's license. And so, like, I'm in the very beginning stages. I even have one of those, like, newly named boxes. Like, shout out to newly named because they already uh, tell you exactly how to do it. But even with the exact instructions, this is just incredibly time consuming. Everything's on the government website, which we already know is trash and so you're trying to click through the government website trying to figure out like okay i'm on the dps website but where on the dps website do i schedule my appointment to go in because i now post covid i can no longer just show up to the dps i have to schedule an appointment i go to schedule an appointment all the dps is near me <laughs> okay i get it i get it, I get it. so i've also read this article already previously but i want to break it down summarize it paraphrase it we bobs it for everybody so this talks about how a lot of men who get into heterosexual marriages where it's between men and women men don't understand how much oh men and a lot of people don't understand how hard it is for a woman to change their name after marriage like Right here, in quotations, men in heterosexual marriages will never understand the mental load and time investment of changing your last name, Delaney, Delaney says. I hope that's how you say her name. And she's the one who put up this video, and it's got over 1 million views on TikTok. Oh, wow, damn. A lot of people feel her, where she's coming from. <clears throat> yeah, I, man. Didn't think of that. Didn't even think of it about it with my mom or with my sisters if they ever, you know, when they pick up their mates. The name changing part. Have I'm mind blown. This is a news moment. Have you ever thought about how much work the woman goes through to change their name when you marry her? We I'm speaking to the heterosexual man. Um, it could also be, I guess, it also goes for gay couples if you're changing names too. Those people who change names, uh, change your name, period, is tough work. And what she's pointing out is, even though the government provides online sites and services and stuff like that, so that you could go there and do it, it's not really that easy. It's not a, it's not a go there, do it one time thing. You're going to go through a lot of stress trying to get it off. Which is why a lot of people related to that. 
especially here in the United States. That is such a... <laughs> On a financial front, you definitely want to worry about that because if you're marrying, like, if you're marrying somebody, it's going to cost money to change their name, right? This is what the article talks about. Money, time, um, mental power. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder, is there any way to lessen the load on that? For people, you know, in marriages that are about to change their name. I want to ask the question, should we just, can you marry and just leave your name as is? But then, you know, you come back to the pros and cons of that, like, usually, uh, it's one of those situations where you go into the all oh, the social rules and the moral obligations and stuff like that. But I just felt this was a cool thing to think about, not cool, interesting, entertaining, educating, bzz, news moment, because my mind was really on that part no I didn't know how much hard work it took it takes people to change their names after a marriage well now you know we found nation it's a lot of hard work it's the way the person on the video puts it, it's stressful and if you're not prepared for it you're going to like the rim or whatever you're going to <laughs> you're going to eat it prepare 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 if you ever get into that type of situation not financial advice not really advice it's sharing some thoughts well that's all we got for the business news section we will be right back after next segment and final segment of the webox podcast Following the market, the segment where we try to go where the money flows. Top to bottom, anything goes. Here's following the market. We're back for the final time. We follow Nation, and we are here for following the market version, or should I say the following the market segment of our WeFobs podcast. So here's what it is. What do we have for this segment? Something interesting, something entertaining, something educating. Got to deal with movies. From Cinema Blend, Eric Eisenberg. Stephen King isn't a fan of barely masked gloating about the Marvel's box office. He offers a theory about why it's happening. Okay. Stephen King, everybody who knows Stephen King, know Stephen King. And if you don't know Stephen King, you've been living under a rock. So this article by Cinema Blend's Eric Eisenberg. Sorry if I butchered that, Eric. What that thing is basically talking about is that the Marvels is the... Uh... So if you're familiar with the Marvel Cinemaverse or the Marvel movies that's been going out, like the Avengers, the Last of the Avengers, the Endgame... They've been pulling in big box office dollars, like I'm talking billions of dollars. We want to get on that. <laughs> we bought the suit. Anyhow, so Stephen King talks about how this latest Marvel movie, which is called The Marvels or The Marvels, which is three different characters, three different main characters in one movie, nothing new to the Marvel Universe, cinematic universe. But he said it, it didn't get, it's the lowest box office opening. This is what the article says. It has the lowest box office opening of all the Marvel movies. And people have been talking ish about it big time. I mean, it's gotten a decent Rotten Tomato score, I think. Like, uh, you know, fans, there's some people that, re that liked it. They were entertained by it. But <clears throat> mostly... People were just trolling and trashing it. And Stephen King, who doesn't watch this stuff, which I think is a lie, because how would he know about this stuff if he didn't watch it? That's just me. But he comes out to his defense and he's like, why are every, why is everybody trashing? Why, why is everybody trashing this movie? 
I mean, it okay. It's a little bit. It's a failure, big failure in the in that it didn't open a big budget went into it and it didn't recoup its budget on opening day. But you know what's the what's the what's the he's asking what is the purpose behind all this animosity or this negativity towards the movie. I mean, movies are what they are, is what he says. I mean, I hope I'm paraphrasing that right. Let me go right back to the article. Um, he questions why anybody would take pleasure in failure. Yes, that's what he questions. Uh, he quotes right here. I don't go to uh, MCU movies. I don't care for them, but I find this barely, this barely mass gloating over the low box office for the Marvels very unpleasant. Why gloat over failure? Big words. So, but he he puts it into some of the rejection of the Marvels will be adolescent fanboy hate. You know, yuck, girls. Oh, he went deep. Oh, he went there. Now, if you know, if you also know Stephen King, you also know he's been getting into a lot of beef with people over social issues, right? <laughs> so he said there that a lot of people are probably hating on this movie because they're all fanboys and they don't like girls being the leaders or the leads in these movies that are coming out. Think about it. There's been a lot of movies with female leads coming out, like hella much in this within the past two to three years, post pandemic kind of thing going on. When we talk about the pandemic, we're talking about that COVID ish that happened you know in 2018 like 20. anyhow stephen king comes to the defense of the marvels that's what the article is talking about. what why is this article a part of the following the market it gives us a good lesson that you know you may do things and people we fobs nation people will still hate on you especially if what you do turns out to be a failure in a lot of people's eyes in a business sense, also a failure. Like in a money sense, it doesn't, it's a failure. The part where you change things around is the part where you say, look, I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to dust myself off, stand up, and try again. Then said time and time again. And this is where this article kind of plays into it. It also plays into the changing times. People are more accepting of a lot of people who had, you know, who are who used to back in the days, used to be the minority, right? A lot of you, if you know, you know. I definitely went there. It's not the minority anymore. People are more open minded to people from different countries and different nations and different walks of life, different gender taking parts in leading roles in things like movies and things like becoming CEO of companies, you name it, our times are advancing. That's what Stephen King trying to put out there with this, uh, I guess that's what this article is getting to from Cinema Blend. And that's why he's coming to the defense of the Marvel. Like, you guys need to back off a bit and uh, let these guys do their thing. Let these girls do their thing. I mean, with me, I just say, whew, social issues aside, in a business matter, okay. In a moral sense, in a life lesson sense, you could look at it. And don't give up. Keep trucking forward. Dust yourself off. Pick yourself up. Like all the filmmakers for Marvels, dust yourself off, pick yourself up, and move forward. Move on. What's that? I mean... They say it was a decent movie. I'm going to try to see if I can watch it uh, over the weekend. Um, there's one of the movies I want to watch. Another movie I'm going to want to watch is uh, Next Go Wins. Yes, it's got our home country in there, American Samoa, for all you know. No. And then a uh, bunch of people I know are all there. Shout out to JSI Moon on that one. And uh, the rest of the, you know, the rest of the cast and crew and all the names of the that are on that movie. <laughs> coming back that's what we got for our following the market segment 
the final segment right here, We Fox Podcast. Some closing thoughts. Looking at the earlier topics, we had the topic about baby boomers buying up the housing market right now. Maybe a lot of you see it going on. Can't afford uh, if you're in your 30s, your early 20s, you're 18 all the way up to your late 30s, you're having a hard time buying houses and you see people who are at that, your grandparents' age, buying up houses, we already talked about that. You know, they, they had more stability, they had more access to money, they kind of, people look at them as being more stable with uh, credit and stuff like that, or they just have cash in their hand, they pay cash. We also looked at, we also talked about you know, we talked about that. We talked about the, uh, hope I'm not forgetting here. Walmart, Costco, and other companies rethinking self-checkout. You know, they may take that out. Uh, a lot of companies already in, what I forgot to say, there's a lot of companies already in the British, uh, in Britain, Great Britain took it out, you know. They started removing self-checkouts. We talked about that, how that could affect another job market where people are going to earn, you know, there are more jobs as cashiers and bag boys and bag girls come start opening up. For the business news section, we talked about how a lot of us don't understand how much hard work it is to go get a name change <clears throat> after you get married. You know, it does say heterosexual men, but I think it's for everyone who's ever getting a name change after marriage. It doesn't matter. And then for following the market, we close it out with how Stephen King came to the defense of another competitive film. Um, another film he's not too big on, but, you know, it's more, I guess he came to its defense in a sense of social justice play, but at the same time, yeah, I think I see that. That's just my opinion of that. And finally, you know, I did say we we're going to close it out with that, but I, I also wanted to share, finally, there's an item out there. So this is for the following the market section. Uh, the highly sought after AirPod Pros are down to $200. This is from Yahoo Life Shopping. Uh, we're going to follow them or like some shopping ideas, especially if we're coming up on the holidays. So this uh, these AirPod Pros are down 200 to $200. That's nearly $50 off for Black Friday. You all know when Black Friday is, right? <laughs> Come on now. So they used to be 249 I guess, and they put them down to $200. See, you're saving $49. And these... Apple AirPod Pros are better than the original generation or the earlier generation ones because I think these are second generations, what they're saying over here. Um, these reviews said people have been having transformative experiences. A lot of you already, I see these in your ears. Comments, like if you're going to get these new ones to replace your old ones, i definitely going to try. I mean... They're the second generation. So these are the second iteration of the Apple AirPods. It's the AirPods Pro. <laughs> there is that running joke about Apple, like Apple puts out a product, which is basically the same product, but wraps it in a different wrapper and everybody goes out and buy it. I, I don't think that's happening here. What's happening here is they kind of improved on it a bit, a little bit. You know what? It is happening. They probably only made a little bit of improvements and then they put this out and I'm over here trying to freaking pitch it to you. Why am I trying to freaking pitch it to you? So you can all visit our WeFobs website right here, wefobs.io. Go to it and you'll come across our homepage right here, you know, welcoming all coconuts. You got most of the stuff, all our podcasts right here, WeFobs podcast or uh, Why Use podcast. Check them out. Supernatural Limits podcast. Check them out. We got more coming. Some of that advertisement. Look at our original music video by Mr. Brian, who is the singer behind our We Fobs theme music. We did a video for this. He's from uh, Ghana, um, West Africa. And uh, yeah, we made that happen, We Fobs. Anyhow, we wanted to take you to our store section. 
when you click on it, it takes you to this section, our store, which there's all types of merchandise, customizable merchandise that we have on there, right? <laughs> this is actually a commercial in a freaking podcast. But look, 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 come on now. You all want to pick that up? Go help us out here. And then there's other things like collectible items from other different uh, genres of entertainment. But if you go here and you leave your cursor there, you get the thing called Amazon bestsellers. You go there to Amazon bestsellers and you come across these different um, uh, these different categories for because we're an Amazon affiliate and we sell, what do you know, Amazon products. Well, we give you a link when you click on it. We earn a little bit of commission from it. So you're actually helping us out. So let's see what I'm talking about. <laughs> go to bestsellers electronic. How did I get here? You go to best Amazon's bestseller right here from the store section. Click on that. Go to Amazon electronics. Click on that. And then you're going to go straight over. It's going to load right here. We got the Apple AirPods, second generation. What do you know? One ninety nine plus tax. U.S. got to do plus tax. Sorry. Uh, I think in America, it's not, it's not tax. Well, yeah. Here we go. Right here. We have the bigger version right here and the smaller version right here. Just click on it from our website. When you click on it from our website, we get the credit for it. So please, please do. Please, please, please do. But if you click on it going straight to it, we don't get the credit for it. <laughs> there you have it. We pop nation. Man. Some closing thoughts. Some closing thoughts. Um, we're definitely going to continue these solo podcasts with yours truly, guys. So smooth. I'll uh, put out some news, the We Fob style, and get you guys, uh, you know, talk to me, comment, ask questions, criticize me. Bring it all on. I'll take all comments and all criticisms. Uh, but please be be gentle. <laughs> uh, it's something I want to do for us. We want to keep an eye on where the money is flowing. Um, plays we can make that can help us on our road towards financial freedom. I want you to share in the road with, the, with me and the rest of the Weebos crew. We are not financial advisors. We are not, you know, specialists of any kind. You saw that in the disclaimer. Um, but we do want to share these journeys with you because we believe it's entertaining and educating. So join us next time on the next We Fox podcast right here. We Fox! Trying to go see different places. Man, I'm so young. I'm so young. Down in all my tent. I stay strong. You know I still move on. No matter what goes on. Started from a far place. Because I started from a far place. I'm all about the money making. I don't got time for any haters. I'm trying to go see different things. Because I started from a far home place. I'm all about the money making.